Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Rethink Thermal Energy Management. Today we have Scott Reed presenting for us, and we really appreciate you joining us. My name is Ron Pilkowitz, and I will be your moderator today. Because we know you may want to watch this webinar again, it will be recorded and posted on Belimo's YouTube site. We will have a question and answer session at the end of this presentation, and Scott would like to hear from you. So at any time, I invite you to type your questions into the question box, and I will read them aloud during the question and answer session. Scott will answer as many questions as he has time for, but if we don't get to your question, please know you will receive an answer directly via email. If you are having any difficulty today, simply type me a note in the chat box and I will try to assist you. Scott, I would like now like to turn the presentation right over to you. Thank you. All right, Ron, thank you. And uh, thank you everyone for, for your time today, taking time out of your busy day to, to attend our webinar, Rethink Thermal Energy Management. Uh, in this webinar today, we're going to discuss uh, the new thermal energy meters uh, being offered by uh, Belimo. We're going to go over a little bit of uh, trends in, in the marketplace. We're going to go over kind of the line overview of what uh, what we have for the marketplace. Also going to cover some features and benefits and some value propositions for the product. So energy management and buildings is evolving. Uh, you know, we kind of talk about the old world and we're talk a little bit coming up about the new world of, of energy management. And, you know, in the in old world, you know, there was zero insight uh, into or very little insight into into energy management. Processes were inefficient. Um, there was no data transparency. Um, you know, it was basically around, you know, keeping the building either, you know, hot or, or cool and keeping them comfortable in the space. Uh, there was little regard for uh, performance and, and energy management. But over time, as the uh, energy started to become uh, more expensive, you know, those things started to become top of mind and we started to make some different changes. So we move ahead to about 20 years ago. So some of those things started to take place and, you know, systems were, you know, complex and difficult to understand. We're cobbling components together to, uh, particularly for energy management, you know, it could be just a, a, a few temperature sensors and, and a flow sensor cobbled together in a, in a building management system to understand the energy management. So it was a very high labor, high time, and very high cost. So it was you know, nothing was very seamlessly integrated. So we kind of move forward to where we are today. We would like things to be a little more, you know, working on things like key performance indicators. So we understand transparency. We have a better, you know, overview, you know, of what's going on within the building. It's not merely just keeping it hot and cool, it's keeping it hot and cool, but efficient. So as we see it today, you know, it continues to evolve and we look at the future of energy management and we see it, you know, data transparency without sacrificing occupant comfort. Data is becoming very, very important today. You may have heard the term that, you know, data is, is the new oil. Um, you know, data, data is very, very rich. Our, our product and what we're gonna talk about today of some of the options of, of data that's available out of our product and the way you can interact with our product to really have a more holistic view uh, of the system and of the overall building. So, you know, performance measures can be targeted and problems in performance or, or, or over energy consumption can be targeted immediately and fixed immediately. So we really see that the future of energy management is built around the data of the product have an accurate product and a way to quickly react to things that are not operating at, at a most efficient level. So we talk about the new world and you may have uh, joined us uh, earlier this year uh, where we had uh, a launch event regarding our next generation of uh, energy valves, uh, the version four. Um, so what we did is we integrated, you know, thermal energy meters uh, with our Belimo energy valve. So we're very excited about that, but that's really not what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about today is our new line of Belimo thermal energy meters, which is basically, you know, the back half of, of the energy valve. It's something that we are, we're very excited to bring to the marketplace. We see a lot of opportunity in terms of energy optimization, and we're bringing forth a lot of very exciting features that we feel uh, could really benefit our customers in terms of targeting energy optimization and really give them a way to rethink 
what they're doing in terms of er energy management. So we're really bringing it together what belongs together in terms of and the energy valve in terms of thermal energy management and control, and then with the thermal energy meter separated by itself, a new level of energy optimization. So here we are today, talking about the Belimo uh, thermal energy meter. Uh, so it's a it's a new product for us, as as I mentioned. You know, we have an accurate and reliable BTU measurement for hydronic heating and cooling systems. Um, it's a very it's a very compact uh, product. Uh, it seamlessly integrates into the BMS. We're going to talk about the connectivity that we have in terms of bus communication and the ways to interact with the product in terms of a cloud functionality and a way to integrate possibly with a third party API via our cloud for addition, additional processes, for example, billing, uh, uh, example, billing platforms or third party uh, integrations for s specific applications. It's equipped for remote IoT based platforms, just like I described in terms of, you know, if it were to be for a, a billing platform or, or a customer's own specific application, it meets the requirements of EN 1434. Now EN 1434 is one of the most stringent standards. Uh, it is a European standard. We're a European based uh, company. So uh, us following the most stringent standards in the world really gives our, our product a lot of uh, credibility. And it gives us, you know, a really way to come into the marketplace with a product that we know is accurate and and reliable. One of the exciting things we also have as well is glycol monitoring and compensation. So we have the ability to dynamically sense changes in glycol concentration and adjust our flow to always maintain an accurate flow rate through our meter and accurate energy management. So that's something that's very critical. We're going to talk a little bit more later. I'm going to show you an example of how um, a, a meter that is not capable of compensating for changes in glycol concentration really suffers in terms of flow measurement and energy management. And really, the thing that we're very proud about is bringing forward the Belimo quality. Um, you know, we have a standard five year warranty uh, with the product. And if we connect the, the product to the cloud, we extend that warranty for another two years. But really, the piece around the Belimo quality is. It's based on that we have been building, you know, ultrasonic flow meters for about nine years now that we've been utilizing on our uh, Blimo energy valve and our EPIVs. So we have a really good core competency in terms of manufacturing, in terms of engineering expertise, and we're really kind of taking this product to the next level, uh, evolving our ultrasonic sensor, including, you know, this, uh, this ultrasonic um, BTU meter or thermal energy meter to be included in this segment as well. So something we're very, very excited about to bring to the marketplace. So let's talk a little about the product design. Uh, first of all, uh, this, is, this is the product here itself. I'd like to talk first about the sensor module. Sensor module kind of houses, uh, you know, the flow housing and, and the temperature sensors as well, in conjunction with the logic module. So the logic module and the sem sensor module separate in case they need to be uh, replaced for uh, certifications or for uh, compliance with uh, directives, for example, MID. Uh, and the logic module is just that. It stores all of the logic for the for the component. It has the bus communications in it in terms of BACnet and Modbus. Uh, it has some other functionality equipped with, with, with which we're going to talk about later, which is our internal uh, web server, our, our our interface to interact with the with the product. Our cloud functionality and communication is built into there, so it's it's very it's a very uh, a streamlined way to kind of uh, leverage all of the data and communication between uh, the flow sensor module and the logic module. We have an internal temperature sensor uh, as well, and in conjunction with that, an external temperature sensor. So there's only one uh, temperature sensor for the customer to install; the other one being embedded. And that's one of the things that we utilize <clears throat> to determine, you know, the glycol concentration uh, with, in conjunction with our patented uh, glycol concentration uh, algorithm and our and our compensation. We utilize that for a couple of features. So one for, you know, for the for the T1 temperature and also internally for our, our own compensation algorithm. The external temperature sensor is very easy to install. Comes with a, with an MPT well. Uh, so really, it kind of seamlessly integrates from an installation standpoint there as well. And the overall, the flow body. The flow body I kind of mentioned before is integrated with the sensor module. 
And that there has really been redesigned uh, from our, our current generation of product to really be kind of take it to the take it to the next level and really advance our flow sensing and measuring technology. Now I'll talk a little bit about some features and benefits. Uh, first one I love to talk about is NFC, and I title this fly configuration at your inf configuration and information at your fingertips. Uh, so this here is an easily way to configure with the Belimo Assistant app, utilizing a, a Android phone or a smartphone to really kind of parameterize the 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 um, the product itself. So if you want to uh, specify it on the heating uh, for a heating application or cooling application. If, if it's installed on the, uh, the return side or the supply side, you can figure your output signal. So this all can be done easily with the, with the NFC and, a, and a, a smartphone in conjunction. Also, one of the really nice things, we have the ability to generate a NIST uh, calibration certificate on demand. So simply by scanning uh, the, top of the top of the meter, you can generate this uh, NIST calibration certificate. It can be, uh, comes off as a PDF, can be emailed or stored for, for future reference. We can also produce a commissioning report, uh, which would confirm the settings and operation. So after you've gone through and you configured all the, the settings and parameters uh, for the meter, this uh, commissioning report allows you to generate a report that can be used to hand over to the billing owner, also can be saved by the commissioning agent to really kind of prove you know that the that the product has been set up according to you know the design configurations, and also uh, it also can be used as a display for flow, energy, and operational parameters. So simply by you know dropping the the phone on top of the meter, you there then have a display to understand in terms of what's going on in terms of operational parameters. Like I said, flow and and energy, kind of the most important things that uh, that you want to see. Uh, with, with, a, with the thermal energy meter. We also, we talked about that seamless integration before. We have a lot of ways to interact with, uh, with this uh, product. And some of the things are very exciting here. We do have uh, BACnet compatibility. So BACnet IP and BACnet MSTP to really allow for uh, connection into a billing automation system. We also have Modbus, Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU. Well, both of those are uh, integrated directly uh, on the uh, on the device itself, and we also have NBUS uh, connectivity. So for those uh, particular applications and specific markets that are still utilizing NBUS, we have a way to support that as well. In terms of feedback options, we have a lot to select from there. Also, we have a zero to ten signal, a 0 0.5 to ten signal, and a two to ten signal that can be uh, easily uh, selected with with the NFC app or what we're gonna see a little bit later coming up with our integrated web server. Or you can also have a user-defined range, which is uh, very interesting. If a customer had like a specific application, and they wanna see their feedback in a specific, uh, specific range, they can define it themselves. So very interesting there as well. One of the other things that really sets our, our meter out in the marketplace is additional sensor input. It can either be an active, passive, or a switch. So for example, if they wanted to integrate a uh, additional temperature sensor to have an uh, additional temperature sensor to monitor a, a process, for example, or, or a humidity sensor to monitor humidity, or an air quality sensor to monitor uh, CO2, which is you know, very important uh, these days in terms of air quality and overall air quality, you can utilize this uh, to connect directly into the meter, saving additional points uh, on, on the front end. So really, kind of differentiates us on the, in the marketplace and gives us something, you know, kind of a way to further integrate into, into the, the billing management system and automation system. So very exciting in terms of integration options. We have intuitive uh, onboard user face, uh, onboard uh, user interface, pardon me. Uh, this uh, directly loaded in the logic module itself, uh, like I described before, there is no additional software uh, to to install or, or uh, have to be uh, updated. It's all loaded directly on the device itself. And this you know, onboard user interface gives a kind of an overview of the operation. Uh, what you can see here, I'm looking at a snapshot of it. You see you can the total flow uh, or instantaneous flow on the uh, on the meter itself, the current power, the supply delta T, the return delta T, 
uh, status. There's a status. If there's any problems with the device, you quickly see right when you logged in the current delta T, the meter readout in terms of uh, you know how much accumulated heating energy or how much cooling energy is being used or the total volume. And also, if there's been an additional sensor input integrated, you see that there and the values there as well. So this really gives a nice way to interact uh, with the product and really you know, kind of see what's, what's going on in terms of overall operation. This is also customizable uh, in terms of uh, the name, location, and building. Uh, so for example, if you, a customer wanted to you know, have this located in a specific area, say, you know, uh, floor floor number one, air handling unit five, it could be completely uh, customized there up in, the, up in the upper menu bar. So it really gives some flexibility and understanding of where it's installed within the building. We have KPIs uh, built into this. So, you know, what the current Delta T is, uh, what the average flow rates are, what the average energy usage are. Um, so to really kind of understand in terms of operation, you know, how, what is going on, what the total flow is, the total energy. So it really kind of gives some benchmarks of, you know, it can look at this month over month to see kind of how the, how the meter is performing uh, in terms of operation in the system. So it really gives another level of kind of communication back to, to the end user. And we also have a 13 month worth of data logger uh, stored on here. So we talked about before about how all of that data is becoming more and more important. Uh, so this is one more way to extract the data. So data on flow, data on temperature, data on power. So all of that can be extracted for further energy analysis uh, to really optimize the system further. We also have complete user administration uh, within this as well. So if, uh, when the customer logs in, if they wanted to change their username and their password, it's completely secure. So that can be changed there as well. So allows you know further security and options to integrate there as well. Another exciting thing uh, that we have for with this product is power over Ethernet. Uh, this here, a single cable, provides both robust data and power. So this really reduces installation cost, eliminating transformer wiring, and kind of really simplifying uh, the installation. You know, as power over Ethernet grows, which is which is currently doing. Uh, you know, this gives one more way to really integrate into a building. You know, power over Ethernet is growing in terms of lighting systems and security systems. So this this product here allows us to kind of leverage some of those, you know, PoE routers that could be installed uh, up, up in the ceiling to really kind of leverage an overall connected building. It's going to simplify your installation uh, and commissioning. Uh, so being PoE, you know, it's it's going to be run uh, through an IP network. So commissioning can be done, you know, kind of uh, remotely. And it can also, if we connect to the cloud, can be done through the cloud there as well. So it really kind of simplifies the installation and commissioning process, much less wiring to, to work with. So it really kind of makes a product that's easy and, and natural to install. As I talked about before, you know, we do have a cloud uh, integration component with our product. We do have a full uh, IoT products and ecosystem here at, uh, at Blimo. Uh, we have kind of two different levels of devices. We have kind of a, you know, permanent connection devices, which are done over Ethernet, which is our current thermal energy meter, which we're talking about today, and our energy valve as well. And we have some kind of human initiated connection with the smartphone, which would be like our butterfly valve and, and some of our VAV solutions. So this allows us to really kind of give one more way to you know, utilize that, our customers a way to utilize that powerful data that's being generated by our devices in their own cloud business application via our API. So for example, if they want to you know, integrate our, our meter into a, a billing system, a perfect way to do that through our API or their own specific application where they're integrating other components. This is another way to leverage our API. We have a, a very uh, knowledgeable uh, group that uh, helps with uh, integrating uh, connectors uh, to specific uh, APIs. So if there's uh, needs for that, feel free to reach out to me and I can get you connected with, uh, with the appropriate people. And we've already, already developed some connectors already but there's always going to be more that we're going to be looking to develop in the future. So we're, we're, we're partners there in terms of cloud connectivity. In terms of uh, our cloud integration, 
Um, this here is our uh, our our web uh, our cloud interface that allows us to once we're connected to the cloud allows us to set and change parameters. This here you can see kind of a similar view to what we had in our web interface. So if our customers connect into the web interface over an IP connection or connect into our cloud, they see a very similar experience. It allows them to you know really be familiar with the product. Now this here has is just a very quick example because we want to keep it simple. A volumetric flow and power and delta T, so it allows you know customer to see uh, quick operational parameters. But the other settings are available. If you click the show all settings, you'll see you know T1, T2, uh, the accumulated energy. So there's a lot of robust data that's available via our uh, cloud interface. We also have the ability to show live uh, trended data. So this we have uh, this one here is, is a, a program that we have that shows. Uh, power, which kind of shows GPM and power together. So we have some kind of canned visual data sets that we have. Uh, so if you wanted to use those, you can use those as well, but you also have the ability to customize those. So for example, if you just wanted to see, you know, GPM and Delta T, for example, you would customize that to allow to uh, optimize based on the data set that you want to see. That can be also sliced over different time periods. So if you want to see it over the day, over the week, over the month, over the year, that can also be viewed there as well. And that data is fully download downloadable. So that way you can take that data and utilize it for additional analysis as well. So it really gives some kind of flexibility there in terms of operation and leveraging. In terms of uh, operational overview uh, and health status, you know we do. Uh, so this this is a really helpful uh, view here to if a customer wanted to log in in the morning and cut, just get kind of a snapshot of you know how the product is operating. Okay, we see from a health status everything is okay. There's there's no problems with the product, uh, no operational errors within the system. Uh, we can see how much heating energy is being used or cooling energy depending on the application. <clears throat> and the total volume that's being accumulated. So this really here gives uh, the end user a really way to monitor if, if, if it was a critical space, for example, to make sure that everything is working according to the design configurations and everything's working properly. And also, the, I talked about some of the reports that you can access in terms of the calibration certificate and commissioning report via NFC. These are available via the cloud as well. So one more way to you know, get that data to understand what's going on. This, this is one more way to kind of communicate uh, if, the, if the reports wanted to be shared via email or, or stored for future reference, uh, one more way to kind of leverage that as well. So really exciting way to kind of interact with the product. Now let's talk a little bit about the Belima ultrasonic technology. Um, this here is a kind of a cross section of our of our new uh, meter, and you know it's very similar to some some uh, our current design that, that we have today. We have an emitter A and re uh, receiver A, and emitter B and receiver B, and those kind of work interactively with uh, transiting signals be back and forth between each other, reflecting it off of the acoustic mirrors. Uh, flow is kind of in this in this operation is going from left to right through through the meter. And we also have an integral temperature sensor here, which I showed you before, which we utilize for our glycol uh, to ability to extrapolate our, our glycol concentration. And we also utilize that in our patented glycol compensation algorithm. So we really kind of leverage the technology of the product to really differentiate us. So basically, in terms of simple operation, you know, we send a signal from uh, middle receiver A to a middle receiver B. That signal is going. That acoustic signal is going uh, in direction of the flow, so as kind of a kind of a headwind. And then we also send another signal in the opposite direction of the flow, and that that signal is going, you know, against the flow, so that has, you know, has has kind of a headwind. So coming up has a tailwind, going back has has a has a headwind. And we look at the difference uh, between those, the transit time, and from that we can extrapolate to what the flow velocity is. And understanding that uh, with the cross-reference, uh, known cross-reference of the geometry of the pipe, we can extrapolate to, to a flow rate or a flow volume. So similar to what we're doing today with our product, we've just kind of expanded it a little bit through, through a different design. And one of the things that's really powerful about this is our, is our glycol compensation algorithm. 
And what it allows us to do is really, is glycol concentration changes that allows us to maintain accurate flow through the meter. And my next slides kind of describe what it looks like if we do not uh, compensate for changes in glycol compensation or changes in glycol concentration. Those have an effect on the overall heat capacity and the viscosity of the media and overall the measurement of it as well. So let's take a look at what that looks like because it's pretty impactful. So here we have you know, the effects of glycol compensation with the, the, the equivalent of true accuracy. So this here uh, is, a, is a chart that shows you know, our deviation on the Y axis on the left, and we have flow, uh, reference flow uh, on, the, on the X axis on the bottom and a logarithmic scale. We're looking at different, uh, different uh, temperatures from 23 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is what was happening in, a, in our meter where we did not have the glycol compensation algorithm turned on. So there's 50% uh, propylene glycol in this application. And what you can see is that around you know, the 23, the 59 degree range, uh, which is typical for a cooling application, uh, typical supply water temperatures for a cooling application, you can see that we have a flow measurement error of about 20%. So that's very significant. So that means that as the glycol concentration changes, if there's no way to compensate for that, uh, there could be an error measurement of 20, flow measurement error of plus 20%, which also is gonna have an impact on the energy management as well. So then what we did is we turned on the glycol compensation algorithm, and you can see that over the overall temperature range, we really tighten up that tolerance. So we have a much more accurate meter, which is gonna produce a much more accurate flow, and, and hence, much more accurate temperature measurement because glycol concentrations are gonna change over, over time within a, beer, within a, within a building. Um, there's gonna be leaks within a building, there's gonna be uh, valves or components are gonna be replaced, and glycol is gonna be added. Sometimes it's gonna be added at the proper amounts, sometimes it could be too much added. So if there's too much added, that could also have a negative effect on the overall efficiency of the building because as additional glycol is added, that media becomes thicker, it becomes more viscous. And when it's thicker, that creates additional pressure drop throughout the building, and that creates additional pumping energy and additional wasted energy because of that additional thicker media to be pumped around the building. So it not only helps from the, from the flow measurement side, but also helps from, a, from a, um, energy management side to not only measure the accurate flow, but we have the ability to show what the actual glycol concentration is. So we, can, we have an alarm that we can notify our end user that when the glycol concentration is set above a design parameter, that there needs to be some changes gone within the, gone within the system. So let's talk about the overall product range. Now, the overall product range is half inch through two inch. We have kind of two segments of meters. We have a, uh, a first top section here, which is our energy meter for glycol monitoring and compensation. And then we have our second section, which is our energy meters for MID. Those are certified to EN 1434 and the MID European Measurement Instrument Directive. So it's really kind of evolves our product line to the, to the new next level, meeting these stringent standards. And all of that is also incorporated into the same design as our meters with glycol. And we also have a NEMA 4 version that we're offering for these as well. So a limited line for the time being, but we continue to expand. I'd like to close out with a couple of uh, slides that you know are not necessarily product related, but more essentially related to the overall um, quality of doing business with Belimo. Um, we have one model per DN size inclusive of all features. There's not additional models for, for backnet communication or for Modbus communication, for example. It's all integrated into one model, so inclusive, inclusive of the features. So it makes it very, easy and one more way to seamlessly integrate. We have a very fast delivery time. These models are stocked on our shelf, so they can ship out in typically two to three days, allowing for a very fast uh, turnaround. We have a dedicated Blimo sales team. We do not use uh, sales reps. Uh, we have a dedicated sales team that really is supporting just our Blimo products. They go through a rigorous training program uh, before going into the field. So they're very uh, adept 
and the knowledge of our product and understand our products very well and very capable to support. We have an award-winning technical support team. If there's any issues in terms of you know, operating the product or any issues installing the product, our technical support team is always here to support and always to get things corrected immediately. And our proven quality and technology. You know, I talked about it in the beginning slides that, you know, we are building uh, a new uh, meter technology, which is based off of something that we've kind of been, had a core competency in for about nine years now. So really just kind of taking our, our, our product to the next level and kind of really evolving our, our product quality and technology. And as I talked about before, the standard five-year warranty also really supports the quality of the product as well. So I'd like to leave you now with some key takeaways. Uh, first of all, you know, the product meets the most stringent standards in the world in terms of EN 1434 and MID, really proving the credibility of the product. These, for, for those of you that are not aware, uh, to be compliant with uh, 1434 and MID, it requires our product to be sent to third parties for analysis. They test the product. They verify what we're saying in our data sheets is accurate. They're verifying the product operates as it should. They're verifying that it conforms accurately to the standard. So it's very, really, really gives our product a lot of credibility in the marketplace. It's simple to order. Uh, as we talked about, we have one model per DN size. It's simple to integrate with all the communication and bus options that we have, simple to commission, and also very simple to operate, whether it be NFC, whether it be the web server, whether it be via the cloud, very easy to interact with the product. And it's also a robust solution built on proven Belimo sensor technology, providing precision and repeatability and reliability. So I talked about that before. It's really based off of you know, a sensor that we've been using for a while now. We've just really kind of evolved it uh, to, to a higher level. So it's something that we have a, a good core competency in. So it's really, we're confident what we're bringing to the market is an accurate, and reliable uh, product in terms of operation and use. Okay, Ron, uh, that's what I have for today. I'd like to turn it over to you for some questions, please. Well, thank you very much, Scott. We are just about out of time, but I will ask a couple of questions that come in. But before I do, please make sure you follow Belimo on social media to see what's happening. Again, if you have any questions after this session today, please email myself at training at us.belimo.com. And I'm going to ask two questions that have come in, Scott. The first one is, if I connect a meter to the Belimo cloud, can I change the parameters? Yes, you can. You, the parameters are fully uh, configurable via the Belimo cloud. So remote configuration is, is a very good option for you if that's something you're looking to do. Okay. One more that was asked a couple of times. Can a thermal energy meter be used for potable water? No, the, the meter is not approved for, for potable water. Okay, well, that's all we have time for today, but please know that Scott will respond to your emails, your questions individually via email, and this session will be recorded and on Bolimo's YouTube site. Scott, thank you very much for presenting today, and thank you everyone for attending. Enjoy the rest of your day.